Kunis, and this is our second week of lessons for the Rackwick Woven Mittens. And we have Judith Sullivan with us again to give us part two of the class. And this week we're going to go over um, something that came up in questions during the week in email. And then um, we're going to look at picking up stitches and getting started knitting the cuffs. The rest of the project after that is just regular knitting. And you will, um, of course, be able to email any questions that you have, but there won't be any lessons on that. We're focusing in this class on what is unique about the sewing and picking up stitches and working with the woven mitten to add the knitting to it. Hi, everybody. I'm glad that you could join us again. Um, I'm busy here. Um, I'm actually just sewing my second mitten together, and I decided to show you um, what to do when, when, when things happen, which they often do. Um, you are, as some people noticed, and a couple people um, emailed me with um, questions, and I will show you an example of what to do when um, you are afraid about the edge of your knitting, of, your, of the woven fabric. And I'm just gonna turn my camera around so that I can show what happened. Um, and what I want people to see, and I'm hoping that it shows right here, um, the surging isn't completely on the fabric. Um, I cannot tell you how difficult it is to surge around a curve and then change direction. It, um, it's a lot harder than it looks. And people who aren't familiar with hand wovens tend to be concerned that it's all just gonna fray and fall apart. And so I'm gonna use the light colored one to demonstrate what to do. Um, Cause this one shows up much better on camera. I took the surging out and we're gonna actually pretend that, you know, there are loose threads here. And I'm just in the process of sewing this seam and I'm going, oh, crumb, that happened. In the days before surgers, and there, there, there were such days, what you do is just sew to the place without, the big thing is not to panic. This is like what happens when your stitches all fall off the needle. Um, beginners freak out. Um, people with more experience just know, don't pull on anything and we'll fix it. And the same thing applies here. Don't pull on it. Don't try to manipulate it. Um, what I really need to do is take half a dozen more stitches and get over to that place. What I might do, and I did this anyway to get a better shaped thumb, I took a slightly deeper seam allowance. Instead of going right over there, I just moved over a little bit. And that actually gave me a better shaped thumb because um, again, it cutting these things out on a curve. And I think you can see where I'm sewing, how far away I am from the edge. I'm just going to finish the seam. I have not panicked. Panic button has not been pushed. Now what I'm going to do is just go through here and overcast a couple times. And this will replace the lost surging. And if, if you don't think that's quite enough, take a couple of additional stitches. Um, I'm just gonna switch sides here so I can make sure I'm gonna And by overcasting, what I mean is I'm just going straight through the edge and letting the yarn go over those raw edges. That's certainly secure enough right there. And I'm just gonna Don't forget your dot. You're you're sliding, so I'm, I'm sliding, sliding down sliding. It's so yeah, hard. And I put my dot there too. So anyway, now I think you can see 
my scene is right here. And I overcast right there to, to just to firm it up a little bit. And once you turn this, I assure you that nothing will happen on the inside. Nothing bad. So I'm just going to turn this. The yarn we have is not super wash, right? And no, it is not. Absolutely not. No. And, so the little but, ends of that will um, probably end up felting together a little when you're wearing together. them. Yes, on the inside. And I, I don't know if I have, I'm just sort of pushing the seam out to make the end of the mitten round by manipulating it and get rid of that. Um, just pushing it. And these, what you'll find, I'm just going to slip this on. What you'll find is that here, um, you may get some felting if you do something like um, try to go up a rope toe with your skis. <laughs> no, um, it, that's, a, that's an old fashioned thing, but I guess those still exist. Um, or anything where there's going to be a lot of friction. Um, yeah, but that's good because it keeps the mittens from wearing out. So if you're using them for work mittens, they'll just get stronger with wear. Yes. And what I just noticed, and this is my mistake, um, I just saw a spot that I don't like. Okay, this is a place where I, right here, I need to actually make a slightly deeper seam allowance because I didn't go far enough. My pieces weren't quite evenly matched. So I'm gonna fix that later. And there is there is nothing, nothing wrong with going back and sewing again. If you find a place where you need to take, you wanna check here and make sure that Everything is all nice and firm, but um, it it won't it won't ravel. It um, it'll be fine. Now, people have a choice of we're going to move on to the cuffs, and you have a choice of the three designs. You have the flower one. You have this um, slanting false entrelac and the cable cuff. And you can do any of those in any color combination. It is up to you. The technique for picking up is the same no matter which one you choose. The only difference is how many stitches you need. And that also will vary depending on the size mitten that you are making. So if you look at your cuff, we're gonna look at the picking up stitches part of your pattern on page four. And I know that people have different ways of picking up and knitting. Easiest place to start is gonna be across the back of the hand. So we're gonna start right here. And you want to go approximately half an inch below the edge, not too close to the surging in this case. You want to be a little bit down from that. If you think that you are going to have trouble keeping a straight line, I have two suggestions. First one is Taylor's chalk. If you don't have that, take and baste a line. By basting, I mean just kind of a long running stitch. And I, basting is your friend. I, Donna and I were talking about sewing earlier and um, I avoided basting for the first probably 40 years of my sewing career. But the last 25, if you do that in just a yarn that you can see, we're going to pull this out later and this will help you make a straight line going across. And all it is, is a running stitch. 
and I'm just going to break the end so they're not in my way. Um, so this will help you keep a line. You can see I went off a little bit there, but I'm going to fix that. Um, with the appropriate color, and you will know by looking at the chart that you choose to do. I'm going to so start to quick pick. note about the colors. Yes. Um, you have the same amount of yarn of all three colors. So That's you have true. plenty of yarn to do any cuff design you want. And then of course the rest of the mittens inside. Um, and so you won't run out of any color, no matter what you do on the cuff. The, in, the lining is not going right. To the anyway. lining you I you will have to use all three colors on the inside somewhere. Um, if you say if you decided to make, um, you know, one mitten one color and one mitten the other on the inside, um, it might be close. You might be playing yarn chicken, um, but starting at the seam right here, what I'm going to do, I take my yarn and right in the seam it's actually a little bit tricky to get through with a knitting needle and pull up a stitch so if you stick a crochet hook through there and pull up a loop of yarn I only need one and you're not picking up the weaving. You're picking up the yarn. Put that on the needle. Now I'm good to go because, and just leave a tail on the inside. We're gonna run those in before we get too, too far. Now, I'm gonna go along and pick up, I need either 30 or 34 stitches depending on the size and style that you're that you've chosen. Is that just, just 34 across the- um, 30 across the, 34 across the back of the hand, not all the way around, the back of the hand. So they are actually fairly close together. And my, my secret is just pick up a bunch. And in your first row of the pattern, decrease to the correct number. I do not sit there and go, oh, I need 10 more here. I just pick up where I think I need one. And I'm just sticking my needle in. And if you think of it in this way, that um, when I'm knitting with this yarn that I have right here, um, the gauge is about eight stitches to the inch in stockinette. So if the stitches are about an eighth of an inch apart, then you're not going to be too far off. And again, I would just pick up one where I think I need it. And let, let your knitting needle go in between. Get over there. You're sliding um, down again. Yeah, they're moving. Um, um, so I have, a, I have a tip. Like if you're worried about picking up like 30 stitches all the way across there, you can yeah. put like a straight pin in. You can. And, and divide it into three or four sections. So you only have to pick up, you know, 10 stitches in each section. Sometimes I find that that gives me less stress than worrying about right. picking up the whole amount across the whole piece. So, and like I said, uh, we're talking about 30 stitches from here over to the other side of the back of the hand. But if I picked up, say, for example, I got, I needed 30 and I ended up with 33. Like right now I have two, six, I have 10 and 11, 12, 13, 14. 15 and I'm not I have 15 now and I'm not quite halfway across I'm not I'm not upset not a bit 
because it's probably better to do it this way um, and then decrease in that very first row um, that you knit in the pattern than it is to have gaps. Because I know people, nothing worse than, you know, people go, oh, I have a hole there. And um, it, I saw this thing in a really old Norwegian book one time. It said, you know, pick up um, one stitch in every stitch along this edge. And then it said, regulate to the correct number. And it took me a while to realize what they meant by regulate. It's like, duh, they want you to knit two together. And that way you won't see. And, and I do this too. Sometimes you pick it up and it doesn't want to come free of the woven part. And you just have to try again because you don't want to pull out the woven threads. You want to go through them. And the other thing that I don't know if it's unique to my knitting. When I pick up and knit, the next time I come around, these stitches will be backwards on the needle. And I have to, I have to straighten them. And you want to do that in the first row. So let me just go across here. And like I said, I am not worrying about my exact number. I'm, I'm trying to remain anxiety free because knitting is fun. Now I will say that at some, you do, if you want to be successful with these patterns, you do need to end up with the correct number at some point before you start row one um, or as you begin row one, you will regulate to the correct number. When you get to the seam, my friend, the crochet hook is going to come in handy again. And I'm going to stick that right through the seam. I picked up a stitch in the seam. And I haven't even counted these. I'm not, I'm not concerned. So I am going to continue with a new needle. Um, and I, I have to say that I am fairly old school. I tend to use double pointed needles for many things. Um, I even have long ones that I could use for a sweater if I wanted to. Now, I wasn't, you will probably find it a little bit trickier to pick up through this woven fabric than it is through knitting towards me I, I hold the yarn in my left hand and every when we start knitting then you can tell me that I knit funny because I do uh, I hold the yarn in my left hand and I wrap it over towards me but stick the needle in a good distance yarn over and it actually helps if you are holding the yarn down and away from the needle so it stays on the tip of the needle as the needle comes back through the fabric. That was one. So I'm actually pulling, like I'm putting the yarn over there and so that it will stay on the needle. And even for me, it is not always cooperating. And that's because that's one of the tricks about a hand woven and I my my actual suggestion if you're having trouble getting it to stay on the needle is to use your friend the crochet hook pull up a loop and then stick it on the needle and pull up another one because 
sometimes it's easier to get it to stay on the crochet hook. That may help. I do that sometimes. And yes, the crochet and hook it, doesn't have to be a specific size, just small no, enough to fit through the weaving. Ish, right. Small enough to go through the fabric easily. And so this one actually has two points. I'm using the smaller end. Um, this one I think is about a D, but I am I don't hold me to that. Um, anything that the yarn, as long as it's not too big. Um, I'm about to come to my thumb seam. And what you might notice is that this palm piece is a little wider than the thumb. So if you had say 18 here and 12 here, that would be a fairly even distribution. But those numbers are, that's pretty arbitrary. Um, and as long as they are, you know, fairly evenly picked up, it's not, it's not a big deal. Ugh. Through the seam, the crochet hook is definitely your friend when you're trying to go through the seam. And I am almost there. Now you may notice that I haven't gone to my third needle yet. Um, right now I don't have to. I just want to get stitches on here. That's all I care about. And pull up, grab that, and this is by far the hardest part of making these mittens. Because after this, you just knit and we're all good. Can you show us one more slow close up using the crochet hook oh, cro to pull up? A of stick? course, yes. Crochet hook through the fabric, go to the other side, pick up your loop. You can see that I'm drag it through and you can, if you pull up a big loop, then you can stick the end of the needle through there. I'll do another one. And then put it on, stick it through, grab your yarn, pull it up and stick it on there. Once I start knitting, I'm going to, I'm going to change that. Um, before I start to knit, I am going to take, uh, I usually knit, and this is just me. Um, I knit this on one needle, the back of the hand on one needle, the palm on the other two. And what I need, um, so I might actually do the cable design here because the other ones that I did were the false entrelac. So what I'm gonna do right now is just slip these stitches onto the third needle. I'm just slipping. And what I wanna do is actually slip a multiple of six if I wanna make the cable cuff so that I can make the, you know, I won't have a cable in the middle of two needles. Um, so if I do 18 and 12, that's 30. And that should work. You were going to so, have to decrease for, yes. because you had picked up too many stitches. Would you do a plain round first or would you go no, right into the I would, chart? I would and... go right into my pattern and decrease as I get there. So, and that's what I'm going to show you. So I need to decrease a number of stitches, like six or seven. And so my pattern is knit four, purl two. So you will notice 
that I am knitting in the back because I have to, first I'm going to get rid of this, that little basting thing that I did. I can pull that out. I'm, I'm knitting in the back because I want to straighten out my stitches. So if that looks odd to you, that's why. So I just knitted two together, knit three. Here's the fourth one. And again, I'm purling in the back to straighten them out because when I put them on, they are backwards. Now I'm so going most to, of us, if we pick up you, our if you, stitches if and they're you, okay, you know we don't have to, to put do them that. Back on, if, you can, if you can pick up in a way that they are already on the needle correctly, um, I applaud you because uh, that is something that I can't do. Um, and I'm just, I just knitted two together again because I know that I need to get rid of about six stitches and two, three, four, purl two. Once I do this row, I will be knitting the regular way. Be from now on, because now the stitches will be mounted on there correctly. This is just my pickup row. And one, two, three, knit four, purl two. I'm gonna knit these two together just for fun. three, four, and my pattern is knit four, purl two. This is, um, this is the part where, you know, you need to make sure that you're, that you're correct. I'm going to be purling this little guy and then purling these two together. And I should be golden in theory. Um, so second needle is going to be the same thing. I'm going to, I, the reason that I want you to have the correct multiple on the needles, and it is noted in your pattern, if you need a multiple, um, is that it'll just make your knitting a lot easier. I, first off, I think it's easier to start a new needle on double pointed needles with a knit stitch rather than a purl. Um, maybe that is just me. But secondly, you can't be changing needles, you know, when you have a cable. So um, you need to get all the cables situated on the same needle. So now I'm on row two and I'm just following um, the knits and purls as they come. And as soon as you get to this, you are good to go because now it's just like regular knitting, only you already have this stuff hanging off the bottom. And what will happen um, before you go too far, it would be wise to take whatever end you used when you picked up, take this, thread a needle, and run this end in because one of the um, one of the rules of this type of knitting is that your project is going to be completely enclosed. There's there you won't be able to get to any of this once you get more of the mitten cuff and lining knitted, um, it'll be really hard to get in here. So um, you run that end in, just run it through the weaving or through your pickup row and get rid of it. And any ends that you, like when I change colors here in a few rows, 
Um, you want to take care of those ends as at your earliest convenience, because the further you knit away from them, the harder it is to dig in there and find them. Um, it, you know, they're there and you can still do it. It just, I'm just trying to make this as easy as possible for you. Um, so like I said, once you, I've just done part of my second row and you can already see, you know, my knitting coming out and yeah, you can see the, I'm going to feel, of the yeah. And you can, right. And then, um, this pattern, I think I, I, it's six or seven rows of this color and then I change um and I can't yeah the stripe pattern I can't remember listed, the stripe um, pattern's listed uh six rows of a and then you have eight eight eight, eight you're eight, alternating eight, eight yeah. rows of b so eight, it's eight, right eight, et cetera. and it's so six rows of the first one and what you'll notice about the cable pattern in particular is you change color on the row before you do the cable and what I found was that 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 sort of hid um it made it look like the the cables a complete cable was a color and it just it looked better but if you want to change it i that's that's up to you um my for this one anybody who's making this one with the colors here you're just you do a total of you do your pickup row and then one additional row and then begin your fair isle pattern. So the and stockinette stitch, that one would be easier for the, for starting right. the pattern because it's right. stockinette. It is. it is. And then, um, cause it's all stockinette and that's that first row would be that one where you're getting to the correct number. Then here, um, as you can see, I can't, access any of those ends because the knitting is in the way and so you want to make sure that after a couple of rows you've anchored your background color and this first one don't go too far before you run those in because it's they're just going to be hard to find um once you do that you would just keep knitting in this case, till you finish the chart, there is one row and they, I tell you what to do. The yarn over knit two together, Pico row. Raise it higher, please. Yep. Oh, like that. Like this. That better? Great. Um, this Pico row is just yarn over knit two together. Then the only trick is doing an additional row of this red color on the other side because otherwise the pearls of this the blue inside cuff show on the outside don't want that um this one the others all have a garter stitch turning edge so you are going to actually be purling four rows after you finish your cuff design you purl four rows and then start the ribbing on the inside. But this, that's what forms your turning ridge right here. And this one, anybody who's knitting false entrelac, um, do not break the yarn after, this one is two, two rows of each color. So you knit 2A, 2B, 2C, A, B, C, A, B, C, and the knitting actually slants. This is the end of the round right here. And what, what I found, because I messed up the first time, I thought, oh, I need to break the yarn. No, do not break the yarn. Carry it up on the inside because it's only going from here to there for the next use. So it's really only traveling four rows up the inside. It's way easier to carry it than it is to have all those ends way easier. Uh, and I think I mentioned that in the pattern. Um, do, 
Um, this one. Cables, garter turning ridge, and then as you can see, I just did stripes, but you could do a little, you could do a little bit of Fair Isle. You could do whatever pleases you. Um, sure, you could do smaller stripes. And, right. I, you could make it, yeah, just if you do two row stripes, then you can just carry the yarn and you won't have any more ends. That, uh, that's appealing. That's it. You know, I, I like to be efficient. Um, the other thing that you will notice about this, I, this is a very simple mitten shape. There's no thumb gusset because this is plenty stretchy. So, and I tried to make it so that, you know, it's just easy to do. Um, and when you, when you get to this point, it, it might be worth just to make sure that you have this in the correct spot to fit here. Up higher. Um, to no, fit, again. Yeah, to fit, to fit into the thumb, it might be worth your while to put your stitches on a loop of yarn and actually put the lining of the mitten inside and try it and make sure that your thumb opening is exactly where you want it. Um, the one, the other part is if you notice from here, Here's, here's my woven thumb. My knitted thumb needs to be lined up with it. And you can see the stitches go straight down to this thumb so that when I put them together, they're going to go into each other. Famous last words. Um, the other, let's see, this is the left mitten. So the other way to do this if you put your thumb into the lining, then, or put your thumb into the thumb thumb, and then stick it down in here, it'll go in better. It is a little bit of a project to get these in. Stick your hand in. Find sure, and that's true even if you need yeah, to I mean, this is, with the lining. Yeah, and you have to right. get the you getting get lining it. inside and lined up is, and is um, um right yeah, so challenge. i gotta like feel around and get that in there but um that's it's completely up to you this the the last uh, additional piece of advice Fire. when you're working on this yeah when you're working on this part you want to make sure that you anchor when you start your thumb that you anchor that before you get any further because once you close this up you can't get in there same thing here once you close this you can't um you can't access the inside of the mitten so you want to have all your ends done before you kitchener this closed and and if you if you if kitchener stitch is a problem i would worst case scenario you could just bind these off and then sew the top together. I will never tell. I, I will not, I won't rat you out. I mean, I think that some people get discouraged. They look and they go, oh, this doesn't look anything like her picture. Well, it will give it a chance. And it's going to take you, it's going to take a couple inches of knitting before it really starts to look like a mitten. Um, rather than, you know, an oven mitt and a blob. Yeah, I found um, that too. And when you have the it, pattern stitches, it takes an inch or two before you can see the you pattern. You really see it, yes. And the, um, it, that was, I thought, particularly true of this one. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't apparent right away that I was going to love it. And <laughs> yeah. so, I mean, I tried, I tried a bunch of different things you know, when I was going through these and you really have to knit like half of the cuff yeah, before yeah. you really see. And what, on the cables, look like. you're only crossing them every fourth row. So you're not going to see the pattern until you have right. eight you or don't 12 see rows. That. Right. Yeah. And, and this is, I think I showed people this. 
earlier. Oh, Gail says she doesn't understand the false entrelac cuff. Um, there are, there are each, the false entrelac, there's only, there's only one row and it's that four stitch repeat that is at the bottom of the chart page, which would be page, can't remember, page nine. Um, yeah, that's my I guess, bad. I left the titles off. So oh, the two wow. together is At least the right slanting. One thing, one thing that, that I'm not responsible for. I feel so much better. Um, all right. Because if you'll notice, the stripes here go a certain way. And you want to make your cuff slant the same way. The two rows that are shown here, one of them is knit one, yarn over, um, SSK. Uh, sorry, knit one, yarn over, knit one, SSK. That is, oh, what's missing is which one slants which way. Right, right. Ha, I, I, left well, I, I had the, titles, right. so that's my bad. Okay. Knit two together it, would slant to the right, and S, the yes. other one would slant to the left. Is SSK that slants to the left. So left slanting is that top chart, and right slanting is the bottom chart. And after you did a row, I, you would see you would start to see it and I, and, and I do hope that people will um, email me and um, ask questions I'm sure that you know I know that the first time through it's 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 a new skill but um, I think that once you do half of one cuff you'll be you'll be good to go um, it, we do, every time I write one of these, and I, I maybe Donna has the same experience, it, there's a, there's a, a fine line between giving enough information so that the person can duplicate what you did, and then, and too much information where they get kind of lost in the directions. And they and they don't they don't know what to do. Yeah, no, it, this it's is too good. many and so, words. But the, and the thing about the thing about this pattern that I love is that you start with the hardest parts for knitters, yeah. which is sewing it's, it together cool. and picking up the stitches. Then the next hardest part is the cuff because, of course, you could knit a plain rib cuff if you want. Anybody that wants to do that, you can. But um, the hardest part in this pattern is because we have cables or color work or the false entrelock for the cuff. And then after you do that part, the rest is just a really plain mitten. Once you do that turning ridge, the lining is just a really plain mitten. So you're done with all the hard stuff. That's the truth. And and it's the other part is that the mittens that you make are yours and they will be unique. I if you if you want to change my color combination, feel free. Um, I the the yarn doesn't matter because we gave you equal amounts of each color. Um, if you know if you wanted to change the color the color sequence here, um, that is absolutely fine with me. I these are your mittens, and um, I'm just here to show you the the techniques that are unique to this particular style of mitten and huh, I know it's a challenge I know um, but you guys have been really good sports and uh, I've certainly enjoyed doing this well um, I enjoyed having you show us all this Judy